All right. How is y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Where the Hell is the FCS Late Night Show. I don't want to talk episode six. Um, this week we have a couple big games to cover and a couple big games last week we wanted to cover as well. Let's see. Um, I guess we can jump right into it then. Yeah, oh, hold on. Going crazy. Um, all right. So maybe we can start with the game of the week last week. Um, Mercer Stetson, this game, uh, had some pretty big implications on the Sun South and did not disappoint. Um, no turnovers this game, actually, in over 900 yards of combined offense. But Mercer was just too much in the second quarter. Put up 21 points, I believe, by uh, in the second quarter alone. Um, and Stetson couldn't really make up the ground in the second half. Stetson quietly moving in the wrong direction in the East and South, which has a couple risers and a couple couple fallers. But um, that was definitely a game that determined some of the footholds for a couple teams um, in the division. He moved down to three and three overall and one and two in conference. And got a big game this week. We'll get to a little bit. Big implications. <laughs> uh, let's see. So then we had Jacksonville State and Campbell, which Jacksonville State won 31 14. So it was tied at half, but Jacksonville State pulled away in the second half. And um, a late scoop and score sealed the game for Jacksonville State. Um, so Campbell is now three and three and one and two in conference, while Jacksonville State is five and one and two and one in conference. So had a small setback a couple weeks ago, but picked up right where he left off. He's still rolling and second place in conference. Next, we have uh, Sanford and Savannah State. Um, an odd game, considering that uh, Baba only ended up winning the possession uh, game by about 20 or 30 seconds. Uh, very unlike him. That ended up working in Sanford's favor. He scored 21 early and held off. Uh, he held Baba off in the second half. Um, no score in the second half. So Sanford's D really clapped down and uh, put Baba away in a, in a you know, not very likely game for, for Baba. Next, we had Alabama a and in Chattanooga. Another interesting game. Um, Chatty looking for his second win on the season, first one in conference. Um, and he took me to the to the very end, actually. This game was back and forth. Uh, he went up 14 nothing in the first quarter, in the first half, or in the first quarter. Um, and I came back, tied it up in the, by halftime. Um, Interesting note about this game: there was they, Chatty ended up 0 for 3 on field goals. Uh, those nine points would have, as you guys can tell, would have won him the game, um, including a, a chip shot 28 yarder from the 11 yard line. Um, when, you know, my D came up big <laughs> and uh, and blocked that one, and then uh, ended up scoring 14 or 14 uh, points in the second half. He scored seven and he was driving down toward the end of the game, and um, interception in the or a fumble, sorry. In the in my own red zone, um, ended up sealing a deal for him. Um, definitely close game, and Chatty's you know although it was a conference and division loss, that was um, he's definitely moving in the right direction. He's his activity in the in the conference has definitely shot up, and uh, his popularity amongst the lead um, amongst the league, with the exception of in Kennesaw, just outside of Atlanta, he's um, he's very popular. Um, kind of a war zone in Kennesaw right now. <laughs> Um, next, we had uh, Florida A&M beating a State, uh, Alabama State 31-7. Uh, it was just turnovers for Alabama State. Um, I think three out of their first four drives ended in fumbles and then had another fumble later. And then even when they weren't fumbling, just couldn't get much offense going. Uh, so, um. I got up 31 nothing and let up a late score to lose the shutout. Yeah, after a two-game slide, finally got back on track and see if I can keep it going. This week. And then we had two other games that uh, didn't finish. Um, two shutouts, actually. Kansas State wins 23 nothing over East Tennessee State. 
and Bethune Cookman pillow pillow keeps his streak and dream alive. Um, winning twenty two nothing over Jacksonville. Both of those games I don't believe finished. Um, but two big big conference dubs for them. Yes. Then uh, I think it's that yeah. So next this week's game. So right now we got uh, my game against Stanford. I'm up fourteen seven uh with two minutes left in the second quarter. Uh couple uh risks that kind of but okay, so I went for it it was like fourth and five I think maybe longer I don't remember uh but I was at my own 20 it in early in the and while I didn't get it I stopped him on offense and then made him miss the field so it didn't hurt me uh but uh, close game. I oh, uh, close game. This uh so far against Stanford and uh, well, I expect it to be closer the rest of the way and this week's game of the and we'll see who comes out. Looks to be the the speedy boy of the conference right now, at least. Um, quite I guess Jacksonville State and then Bob are also. I guess uh, Campbell and Chattanooga are, are not too far behind. Um, Campbell forcing two pretty big turnovers in the first half so far, up 15 nothing on Chattanooga. Um, you know, I've heard a couple of murmurs of frustration on Chatty's side in, um, in the chat. Um, but Campbell showing out in a, in a game that he really needs to win to, to kind of turn around and uh, get above 500 again. Yeah. And next we have Jacksonville State and Savannah, which is tied seven seven. And I actually, but apparently, Baba ran a kickoff back, so um, Baba's hanging in there so far. Though it is first quarter, so we'll see. Uh, uh, see if Jacksonville State can pull away like he did last game, or Baba hangs around the rest of the game. We'll see. Uh, and then we got Kennesaw State and Stetson. Uh, KSU is up seven nothing. Only a minute and a half in the first quarter. Um, this is an important game in the um, Ace on South. Two teams that are, like I mentioned, are moving in opposite directions right now. Uh, Kennesaw State gets a win here, and some things happen and fall in, uh, in his place. He could be tied for first in the Ace on South this week, um, which would be huge considering the start of the season. Turning it quite around, getting you know starting three and one to come to be huge. Stetson looking to get above five hundred overall and get back to five hundred uh, in conference play. Um, desperately looking to kind of turn the past couple weeks around and um, in a game that not necessarily everybody's watching because there's two other big games going on in the conference, but this is very much nonetheless very important. And then um, next we have Alabama State and Jacksonville, which is the two. Teams at the bottom of the South, and one of us will get their first conference win this week. Uh, so, still early, still tied zero zero, but we'll see who is who can at least start heading in the right direction. Even if it might not end up doing anything, I don't know. It could be. There's still time. Um, uh, but we'll see who's the bottom of the South. I feel like both of those two teams are, are have been but the uh, enigmas of the entire conference. Jacksonville, I, I've played him. Um, the first couple of games in the season, he he lost by probably I think the first four games he lost by a combined uh, like less than ten points. Um, they're all very close games, and then he just kind of kept sliding throughout the rest of as conference play kind of got underway. Alabama State has some uh, has a big win, you know, over Southern Illinois, but then some other questionable losses um, that weren't necessarily close. So, you know, it's with these two teams, it's really about which team they have that shows up every week. And um, I really think that they both would like to take this win this week. So interesting to kind of see how that plays out and see if which one actually gets their first conference win. Um, next, we have two other teams, that, two other games I haven't kicked off yet, Alabama a and and ETSU. Actually, I just got um, East Tenney's number about 20 minutes ago. So that game should be kicking off shortly. And our other high-profile game, Mercer, um, Bethune-Cookman, as Josh pointed out, 
this game can defi- um, decide who takes uh, the ace on south top seed for right now. Um, very big implications. And a game that I think um, after seeing the releases of the committee rankings this week and the coaches poll, but if Cookman really wants a, a high profile win, and this not necessarily a ranked win, but um, you know, Mercer at four and two, they're, they're a good team that's going to pad their resume um, looking to uh, definitely add to, to their already um, pretty decently looking resume. Next week. So we got rankings or? Yeah, let's go through the conference standings real quick. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can copy this into the the chat. Or not. All right, we'll just we'll just we'll run through it. If somebody wants to, I'm having trouble copying it. Um, but if somebody wants to copy judges, uh, a son ranking or conference standings and put them in the chat, it'll be my best run forever. Um, okay. I'll run through the north. If you want to run through the south? Okay. So, um, in the north, we have Sanford and Alabama and and Alabama A and M, both three and zero, tied at the top of the a Sun North right now, both four and two. Um. Both looking to stay on track this week. Stanford playing FAMU and Alabama and playing East Tennessee. Jacksonville State number nine, um, the coaches poll number five, I believe, in the committee rankings. Um, two and one in division, two and one in conference, five and one overall. Then after that, you've got the pair of one and two teams. Savannah State's one and two um, in conference, two and four overall. Campbell's one and two conference three and three overall both those teams trying to move back up to 500 in conference this week and then running up the north you got the lowly um winless conference teams in east tennessee and chatty um i know chatty's number one in some people's hearts but right now probably should be a little bit higher on that uh on that north side and in the south we have bethune cookman at first of course um three no in division six no overall then we got Mercer, who two and one in division and four and two overall. Kennesaw, who is two and one in division, two and four overall, and Fort A and M, two and one and four and two. Um, then we got Stetson, who's one and two conference and three and three overall. And then Jacksonville and Alabama State, who are both winless in conference, but Alabama State two and four, Jacksonville's one and five. Uh, we got the two in the bottom going against each other, seeing who can move up a bit. And we got the two at the top going against each other. Um, and if Mercer pulls it off, he'll be top of the south, even though he might not be top overall. Uh, so we have some implications at the top of the south. Next, um, let's run through some of these conference standards, the conference power rankings. Um, like there's a there's a bit of traffic congestion with all these four and two and uh, two and one conference teams. So let's run through these real quick. The power rankings came out um, at one with all of the first place votes. Uh, Bethune Cookman, then Jacksonville State at number two. Um, Sanford, one of the one of the mover one of the movers in the right direction um, at number three. Alabama A and M moving down number four. Florida A and M moving up three turning around last week to number five. Mercer staying put at number six. Um, questionable after their performance last week over Stetson, the game of the week. Um, some people in, in Macon are probably scratching their heads, um, asking, wondering why some of the coaches don't put some respect on the Bears' name. Um, Campbell at seven, dropping down three. Kennesaw State, like I said, moving in the right direction, moving up to two and four, the number eight. Stetson moving down. They're at three and three, the number nine. Um, Savannah State number 10, Chatty up to number 11, Alabama State, and Jacksonville and East Tennessee State rounding out at the bottom. Yep. Um, yeah, I think definitely Mercer has been the one kind of screwed over by the power rankings the most this season. 
Uh, I don't know. It, it's Always it's lower than what it should be. Yeah, it, it's interesting because Mercer has been has received, like I said in the last show, Mercer has received votes in every single coach's poll this year, um, and it seems like some of the coaches are giving him some respect. And I, and and I'm not to say Mercer's a great coach. Uncle Rico has has that program in tip top shape, um, but it feels like sometimes maybe 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 the coaches in the A Sun are a little bit reactionary to some of the recent. You know, movings and um, uh, and uh, you know re- results of some of the games have been played within conference, and sometimes I think some of the results can be kind of muddied in the water. And I think Mercer is just the, a victim of that this week. Um, he's a good coach, and I, and I don't think that he's, you know, I definitely think he should be probably higher up in that list. Um, there's just a lot of good teams in this conference. Yeah. Um, so me and you had slightly, not too. Uh, I switched four and five, so I had four and M four and Alabama and M five. Then I switched Kennesaw and Stetson, so Stetson eight, Kennesaw nine, and then Chatty and Alabama State, so I had Chatty twelve, A State eleven. It's interesting. We both had Florida and M higher than what they actually came out to be in their power rankings. I had them at three. Everyone else moved down. Um. And then I flipped Kennesaw State and Stetson to, um, I think that game, obviously that game's happening this week. So, you know, that'll, that'll be a true determining factor of what's, who's the actual, you know, the, the more powerful team and the power rankings per se. Um, but like I said, I, that's been a theme of this whole entire conversation so far is teams moving in the right direction and teams moving in the wrong direction. Thankfully it's only week six, you know, we're only halfway through the season, but um, some teams are going to turn it around. Some teams looking to continue that train moving in the right direction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Then we got a quick belt update, uh, which was Bethune Cookman being Jacksonville. So Bethune Cookman gets their first win of the Florida belts while Jacksonville gets their second loss in the Florida. Uh, so Jacksonville is pretty much knocked out. Uh, especially with their point differential being they scored six points those two games and 42 scored against so they can play spoiler to me later in the season if they want but for them actually winning they're pretty much knocked out right that's going to be a big uh, that week 12 matchup you got with Jacksonville man that's going to be what if, could you imagine if that uh, <laughs> knocks you off? <laughs> oh, like, I beat Bethune Cookman and Stetson, and then Jacksonville knocks me off. What? <laughs> um, I think besides that, there are no other belt games this week, as far as I know. Yeah, I don't think. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's now that I'm looking at, this, at these belt situations. You know, we were talking about Mercer not getting enough respect, and I. It's kind of it's kind of hard to admit this because they're ranked in the committee poll and the coaches poll, and they're highly ranked in the power rankings for the Sun. But I feel like sometimes, you know, based maybe based on his activity in the conference, but we don't always give Matt the respect he deserves. Sometimes, um, Jacksonville State is a very good team, and um, you know, I feel like sometimes that slips through the cracks. But um, since we're on that in that same vein, um, I think. Um, he's gonna he's gonna do wonders for us in the playoffs. I, you know, it's all but I think he he's gonna continue on this path and he's he's gonna do wonders for us in the playoffs. So, just talking about teams that are, um, you know, flying flying under the radar a little bit. Okay, next we can get into um, the Sunny D, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll get our our guest interviewees on for the show. Um, Sunday of the week, this was interesting because there's a couple games that didn't finish, so a couple shutouts, but uh, generally going to try to swear, stay away from those um, because, you know, with, with DOG points, um, I like to focus on games that have finished completely. And by no means does this take anything away from Kennesaw's victory or Bethune Cookman's victory, but um, I really honestly think that Florida and m deserved it this week. Um, Four forced fumbles, um, essentially a shutout until the very, you know, until the fourth quarter. Um, on top of that, they, they forced a missed field goal. 
and uh, one time possession battle 16, you know, by five full minutes. Um, <laughs> I, I honestly, I think, although I think you will, I honestly think that you or your defense is going to have to shine um, in one of your Bama games, Bama belt games. Um, and I definitely think if that happens, you'll win Sunday of the week. Um, it just doesn't, you know, when you're playing the Jacksonville, um, I think, uh, you know, your their offense is is your is the best defense for their own offense, you know. So uh, I'm gonna give uh, FAMU some boiling OJ to to scarf down this week. Yay! <laughs> Drink uh, up, brother. Just for the record, I didn't vote. Oh, I, I didn't. He, that that was all you. I didn't. I haven't looked at the other games. I haven't anything, so I didn't put my name in. I didn't put anybody else's name in. For the record, uh, for the record, Bethune Cookman and Sanford and Kansas they were also considered. Um, both of those four teams played incredibly on defense, but unfortunately, there's only one thimble's worth of boiling OJ to hand out this week, and uh, and Sam, you won it. <laughs> Okay. Um, so before we get into Shine or Shade, I think we want to uh, bring our our guests on, if that if that works. I only see one of them in the voice chat. Well, maybe. No, I think we got both. Never mind. So we're going to bring on some committee members. Uh, we're we're going to have Campbell this week. He got sick and couldn't come on this week, so probably be probably be next next uh, two weeks from now next show. Uh, but we have both Penny and May coming on. Uh, let's see if we can unmute them. It says well, yeah, it says Mason can talk. It doesn't say Penny can talk right a second. They might have to leave and come back. I think I've I've seen that happen before. Yeah. I'll even never come back. <laughs> Let's see. Mason, are you able to talk? Can either of y'all speak words? I think they have to, yeah, I, I think they have to log out and log back in. Well, out of the voice chat. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. There he is. What? What's up, lad? I think I'm not sure if Tenny is able to. All right, we can. Hello. Hey. Oh, heard him for a How you doing? How you doing, Big Dog? Uh, am I good? We can hear you, can hear Tenny. You. Tenny is. I'm not sure what's going on with Tenny. Okay, cool. Sorry for that uh, mic interruption. I was listening to my uh, CFB podcast. No problem. We're just going to burn you at the stake real quick. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, off to the gulag. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So I guess we can just get right into it. I, I guess, Tenny, if you're able to hear and you, you can join any time, feel free. But right now we can't hear you. So we'll just work with what we got. Um, so, yeah. So, Mason, I guess I want to preface this before I ask because I know this was just a – you know, this was just like a, what do you say, like a trial version of the committee and definitely stirred up some hearts and a son, but, um, yeah, I guess maybe if you just want to, for those of us like myself who are not super familiar with the committee process, maybe you just want to walk through kind of the process for picking the teams, um, maybe some of the, the metrics parameters that you guys look at and then, um, yeah, let's start with that first. Okay. One through 25. Um, it's, a, it's definitely a really complex process. Like, I think it took us 
uh, I think about five or six rounds just to establish the top ten for our committee rankings. So we aren't just looking at solid wins and losses. We're looking at time of possession, um, possession, just possession metrics in general. We're looking at seeing the quality of opponents that they're playing, the quality of wins that the that the team have, um, and just all a bunch of different things. Like, yeah, I mean, you can look at it from just a pure win-loss perspective, but our job is to make sure that we can find out who the, the contenders are from the pretenders. Um, and I know that we did kind of um, – upset the apple cart a little bit with our um, first ranking uh, with the A-Sun. Um, but the thing is, if you look at it, the first, it's a 24-team playoff, and I believe the top eight teams get a bye. So 25% of the teams that are getting a bye are in the A-Sun right now. So even though Bethune Cookman um, is 6-0, and they are still a really good team. It's just our problem with – at least my issue with them was that they don't really have that signature marquee win yet. You have uh, Northern, Iowa, Northern Iowa, who, yeah, they're good, but they're a top 30 team. Like, a lot of these other teams that are in uh, ranked one through five have a top 10, top 15 win. And then you go to the Sim Cookman, no, this is no offense to them, still a really good coach. They just don't have that signature win yet on the season that we're really looking for. Um but, I mean, that, that's really just the way we look at it. Like, we aren't just looking at it from a pure win-loss perspective. We're looking at it from all the different perspectives we can look at. And that's where we got to the ranking that we got for you guys. Are you going off of what teams are now? Because was it Northern Iowa in the top ten when Jim Cookman beat? Yeah, but the thing is, is if you look at the rice sheet um, that's on main, if not, I can probably link it. I can link the rice sheet on here. Uh, um that those rankings change every game that they play. So just because you're playing, let's say with me, whenever I played Matt uh, week two and he just upset Princeton, I believe his computer rankings were super high. Now he, I think, is maybe not even top 100 on teams. So, yeah, back then that was a huge shock factor, but now it's just kind of a, okay, sort of win. Um, no, I'm not saying that Chase is an okay sort of win or anything like that. What I'm saying, though, is that the rankings are a organic thing. They aren't going to stay static. They're going to be changing with quality of wins and quality of opponents. So, yeah, Chase at the time was a top-10 team, but now he is not. And really that's all we can get at right now. And there is no real way to – get a, a, a finger on the pulse yet until it is, I'd say, probably week nine and onwards, because from there that's really when we can tell who those cream of the crop teams are that can get that buy in the first round compared to the teams that are going to have to fight it out against the at-large champions and the other people who uh, gotten their way into the playoffs, if that makes any sense. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so I'm going I'm to ask a question uh, in kind of a, a bit of a taboo term here in this universe, but um, I'm just going to ask you anyways. So, you know, and, and it goes in the same vein with placing teams um, like like Mississippi Valley State in the committee. What is, how much weight do these quality losses um, add to somebody's resume and their record, and, and how does that impact their committee ranking? Um, just one second. Let me pull up what exactly I said for my ranking for Mississippi Valley State, assuming I'm at liberties to do that with uh, Tenny on here. Um, I'm also in my car right now. So the way I looked at it, Wait, um, I move up because I got beat, oh, I got beat by 10? <laughs> just a second. Uh, oh, I think, is, I think Tenny can, Tenny, can you speak? You yeah, I'm, I'm 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 here now. Sorry, I was I was in my car earlier. I wasn't aware I <laughs> needed to be on right yeah. then. <laughs> no problem. Um, sorry, I'm just pulling up some stuff as well, so I can. No problem. We definitely put you guys on the spot, but thank you guys for having <laughs> on the show. Okay. Comes with the job. <laughs> <laughs> So what I said with Mississippi Valley State is I said that all of their wins have been close except against Missouri State. 
Um, Missouri State at the time of that win was a 5-0 and team. Um, the losses to uh, JSU and Drake are a little bit of stinkers, but they're not the worst in the world. Um, in my opinion, they have to win out in order to be guaranteed a bit in my eyes. Um, their future only opponent of note is the 18th-ranked Southern Illinois, while the rest of their opponents have an uh, average composite ranking of 92.3. So they've looked good in a lot of their games, but a lot of their games have been close. But it's the fact that they're able to be consistent with how close they are that really puts them up at the rankings that they have for me at the very least. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I'm, oh, yeah, like, no problem. I had the wrong shit. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so you, we were asking about Mississippi Valley, right? Why yeah. is none of this? And, and, and particularly about the whole concepts or lack thereof of, of quality losses and scheduling good teams on your on your schedule, um, even if it means you know, a loss might look be- a loss against a good team might look better than a win against a really bad. Team. So for for me, a lot like qual like quote unquote quality losses are more of a tiebreaker for me between two similar teams. So like, say two teams are four and two, and they, you know, like one team may have a couple better wins or whatnot. But if if the uh, if team B has like a really bad loss but the other team has lost the quality teams. It's more of like, a, I use like losses as more of a tiebreaker than as like a deciding factor. Right. If that makes any sense. Gotcha. But I will also say that in these rankings, like comparing to what we did last year, once we got out of like the top six, there's really like no teams that, like no teams are really that good. It's It's very tough with such a small quantity to really truly rank teams, you know, outside of, you know, like, because the top six, you know, from Montana State to Bethany Cookman, those teams are all solid and have had, you know, have good resumes. But once you get outside of that, it's really starts to get muddy. And so we're actually continuing on right now. We're just going through the full process just as like a practice run through. And we're to the point where nobody really knows what, what to, what's what, because there's just not, there's just not enough there quite yet. Which is also why this is an unofficial ranking. You know, we won't do the first official one until week eight when there's, you know, two thirds of the season have been played and we actually have something to go off of. Or more, I should say. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> you know, especially with, now that you know, in the A Sun chat of all places, if there was one thing that you could tell those coaches who are who are kind of freaking out about this first about this first committee ranking release you know what would you tell them you know, to kind of ease their mind i mean it's it, it does come to, i mean we you know we do play off of you know the quality of teams you've beaten and it it just is unfortunate that a lot of the teams that bc has played at this point have kind of put up stinkers for the whole rest, you know, for all their other games. Um, but the A Sun as a whole, at least from what it looks like within the committee, had, like is a strong conference. I mean, you guys had two in the top six, and I think we have another two that, you know, look like they're, you know, top 25 teams at this point. So that's, you know, better than most conferences can say, really. So I think it's a solid conference, and you guys will have plenty of teams in. And just beat the teams in front of you and you know that's all you can do right and don't and worry about it too much at this point because everything's gonna change <laughs> i mean you know we were halfway through the season you know some teams might lose every game in the second half or, you know it's just like everything's gonna be completely different come week 12 or you know the final rankings uh, real quick, um, if anybody wants to go, uh, attack, uh, Naki, because, uh, they're saying an FBS show is better than this show, um, which we can't have, uh, he's oh in general chat, right? All right, get your pitchforks, get your pitchforks, can't have a ride that <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think the FBS show is going on, like, 
Well, so it, they did like, like they released their like ranking similar to we did oh, last okay. night. They did theirs tonight. Okay. And so I guess they're talking about it. I don't know. Because <laughs> because Jake does game day like the Tuesday night before a game week starts. So he did that last night already. Gotcha. Okay. So I don't really know what this is. And I, I will say, if there's any consolation, especially for, particularly for Jacksonville State and Bethune Cookman, um, and this was this was mentioned when the the rankings were released, and I don't I know this isn't exactly what Pella wants to hear, but his best games definitely are ahead of him. And same with Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State still has to play Sanford and Alabama A&M um, to just decide the division, right? And Pello still uh, plays Mercer this week, has to play Florida A&M, um, you know, and has, still has to play Kennesaw State, right? So um, that's going to be, you know, they, their, their divisions are not necessarily wrapped up, but if, if that is a consolation. And uh, I, I, I don't know if we ever got full confirmation on that, but on that does way. he have a Week 8 game? Because it's not showing up on – on the schedule I sheet think that he I said have. He originally had Houston back. But it's got like a new coach happened. now and so yeah, I don't know if there's I don't know what happened to it. You know, there's a chance I mean I don't a lot of teams already have games scheduled, but you know, there's Speaking opportunities. Speaking of week there. eight, uh Mason, I'm gonna steal a joke real quick. On a scale of one to ten, how excited are you to lose? I mean, right now I'm uh, doing really well against teams in the South, so I think this is just going to be routine for me. Um, you know, obviously coming from the better conference, I'm not too worried about playing the A Sun. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week. Yeah, right. there, are, there are two Big Sky A Sun games next week out of conference, and uh, so on. Right now I'm playing a real barn burner against Tenny. Uh, really stressing me out. Uh, just dropped an 80, or not just dropped, but uh, dropped an 86 yard bomb as an option team, which was pretty cool. But yeah, I'm looking forward to our game next, uh, next not week, next whenever we do it. Um, but yeah, 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 ten, two weeks, whatever, sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be fun. <laughs> um. Do you have any more questions about the committee, or, and, or should we move on to Shine and Shade? Shine and shade. <sighs> yeah, I, that's all that I had. Um, I guess, so, I have I have one Shine or Shade that I wanted to ask you, too, because the other three are, are more related directly to the conference. But um, if you look at our conference standings, um, Campbell, Savannah State, and Stetson are all one and two in conference. Um and I believe Campbell's three and three, Savannah State is two and four, and Stetson is three and three. Um, if you had to pick one of these three teams that has the best chance of making it into the sneaking into the playoff, which team has the best chance, and then which team has the best chance to play like a season ruiner for a playoff bound team? Wait, so of the one and two teams, is that what you're saying? Yeah, so that's that's Campbell, Stetson, and Bob. Yeah. Um I will say that Campbell is the most likely to come back and and win a division or win the conference because he's a great coach and just had some rough games earlier this year. And Bob was definitely the spoiler. Like, he does that in FBS already, and I could totally see him doing it because he kind of, like, casually goes about a game, but if he's in a game close late, he absolutely will try as hard as he can to knock that person off. Yeah. So, for me, I think I'm going to have to go um, with one of the two North teams. My problem with the South is it's just – it's too close right now. You've got – I mean, you got Bethune-Cookman at a 3-0, and and then you've got both Mercer and Florida A&M, who are both 4-2. and um, Got to get some shine on boy Kennesaw State, though, also 2-1 and one on conference. But um, I just think being fourth place in conference right in a conference right now and in a division as tough as it is um, – I think that's where Stetson falls behind. I definitely could see Baba uh, pulling a couple of games out or Campbell doing really well. I mean, he is, after all, the conference dad. So I could definitely see one of those two teams um, 
if not competing for a playoff spot, definitely playing spoiler down the season and uh, causing some chaos in the in the uh, A Sun. Uh, what do you? How many do you? T- uh, how many teams do you two think the A Sun gonna get into the playoffs this year? We've on the show been thinking probably four. If we get lucky five kind of thing. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say four like, is would be my guess. Uh, I would say anywhere from three to five teams. That's just yeah, I mean, anywhere in that range, like three to five, six is just tough. You know, last year the Big Sky had, what do we have, seven? And, like, that's just, like, I don't think we'll ever see that again because that's essentially six of the 14 at-large bids, you know. Yeah. And there's some other great conferences this year, like the Missouri Valley and the DIC and the freaking Ivy as well. Like, I mean, there's just so many good conferences that getting, getting more than three or four at large bids is just going to be tough, but I could definitely see the A-Sun getting three at large and then whoever the champion is. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Four, we get lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the thing is too, it's really dependent on how you do an out of conference, um, for your at large bids. So, yeah. That's the reason why the Big Sky got so many teams last year. Is that I think the Big Sky had some ridiculous winning record um, in out of conference. Well, we had games. like we had like five teams undefeated in out of conference play or something crazy like that. So it just boosted like the conference, you know, like you know how it looked. So it's like it didn't matter if you lost to another team that had also won four out of conference games. Like they both looked good. Mm-hmm. Oh. But we had eight teams. Yeah, which is just never going to happen again, honestly. <laughs> and I, I put a lot of that just to, because the FCS really didn't really blow up until week two last season. And the Big Sky was one of the first ones to fill up and has had active coaches ever since. And a lot of conferences, like, struggled to, like, be more than half full, so it really hurt them when it came time for the playoffs, even though they were all full at the end of the year. So, yeah. that won't be as much of a problem this year. Yeah, because if you think about it, I mean, eight teams, that's the entire Ivy making the playoffs, you know, if, if you put yeah, it in Yeah, like, <laughs> well, and yeah, eight, that, that would mean, you know, uh, Cal Poly won the conference and then seven at-large bids, so half of the at-large bids were from one conference. Like, that's insane. Right. Damn. All right. Well, that's all that I have. Um, thank you guys for taking the time to write for the show. Um, yeah, kind of no putting problem. you on the, on the firing squad. But, um, I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I kind of like that question, the Stanford question, if we want to do that one. Since Mason's still on, we'll grab him before he walks out the door. Mm-hmm. Um, Stanford asked, and you, you kind of referenced this earlier, what three A-Sun teams outside of Jacksonville State, if you had to pick three, outside of Jacksonville State and the two is the, is the committee keeping an eye on? Uh, so, the one team that I'm looking at, um, right now is Florida A&M um, just because of the quality of opponents that they've played uh, it's just it's a really good uh, re- schedule that they've got going ahead of them um, so you've got that you've got at least Jacksonville State and Bethune Cookman and then Florida A&M um, I'm Outside of those two, Florida A&M is the one that 
has impressed the most so far. Um, you know, they're at this point solidly like up there. Um, if as far as the rest, I mean, it, there's, you know, you, I mean, there's so there's, I don't know. <laughs> you have so many like four and two teams that are all gonna end up playing each other, and it's just yeah. kind of like whoever you know. You've got like Kennesaw and Alabama A and M and Samford. Like any of those teams, it's gonna be. I mean, I don't know who plays each other cross. You know, like who plays who. You know, cross division, but. Um. Yeah, like I said, you know, it's probably you know. So you got Betsy Cookman, Jackson State. And then Florida A and M are like my easy top three right now. And then I'd put yeah those other what four Sanford, Alabama A and M, Mercer, and Kennesaw would be you know like they're fighting for a playoff spot. Like they're you know if they get some good wins and get hot down the stretch, they'll be one of those ones that gets that fourth you know that fourth or fifth spot. Yeah, and I could see a team that's six and six and making it into the playoffs, just with how stacked and how much of a quagmire this conference is. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying like it's a good <laughs> conference that you're in. So even if you are a six and six team, there is a, there's still a strong chance that you could make the playoffs if you're uh, if you can prove it with how you how you look both on the field and, and with your stats. So yeah, I mean, just because you your teams weren't included at the beginning doesn't mean that they won't be included at the end. Or if the conference just cannibalizes each other and the division champs are like yeah. six and or like five and three. <laughs> yeah, that makes our life a little difficult. Uh, don't, don't do that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, if you just win your division, win the conference. Yeah. You guys want like this thing like two game line between the top four and bottom ten. <laughs> I mean, a little bit of separation makes our life a little bit easier, but, you know, we signed up for this position. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Um, I guess uh, me okay. and uh, Slowly will do the rest of the Shine and Shades. But uh, thank you guys for coming on. Yeah, thank no you. Problem. Um, Who do the first one? All right, so yeah, I'll give you the first one because I think this is a pretty ends up with more conference wins than Kennesaw State or Stetson this year. Hmm. Uh... That's uh, that's kind of you know it, if you had asked me this question three weeks ago or three you know, FCFB weeks ago, I probably would have been like absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of crazy. Especially, especially given that they played each other this week, um, the loser of that game might, you know, might definitely hold a flame to, based on both all three of the team's trajectories. Yeah. So Chattanooga has one conference win. So does no, can't pass two. Um. Um. I could see it. Chattanooga uh, has been getting better, uh, but uh, it go either way. It's not like it doesn't seem like it should be true, but looking at the record, someone goes on a little bit of a slide. I can see it. So I guess shine. I think it'll happen. I don't know which one. I think it'll happen. Okay. Yeah, this is tough. Um, I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna shade it. Um, I know, you know, I mean, both of those teams already have at least a one game lead on Chatty right now. I, you know, Stetson kind of comes and goes. Um, you know, his his activity and it seems it seems like his activity and his performance have been relatively related. I think he comes back. Uh, I think he. Um, you know, with with a one game lead, and he's already played. Uh, he's already got a game on Jacksonville, I believe. He's also played Bethune Cookman, but um, I think I think that they both. I think that the the kind of record stays the same, and they both finish a game above Chatty and conference conference play record at least this year. Yeah. Um, so. 
Um, I see. So at least one team in the conference championship will have one conference. Ball. I think that has to be a shine, right? Well, that would be. Hmm. No. That means right. that either. Al yeah. Yeah. I was thinking. I, I was thinking overall. So yeah, there's three teams undefeated in the conference right now. So you think there'll be two teams left undefeated in conference by the time conference championship? Uh, I think so. That means that well, there's Sanford and I play each other week ten, so that's on the horizon. So that means that one of us is gonna have a conference loss at the end of that week. Um, Sanford might have a conference loss this week. <laughs> That's true. I mean, but through Cookman, <laughs> Hello might have a conference last week. For, you know, they haven't kicked off yet. Um, so, I, you know, I personally think that um, after this week, and you know, I think that I'm gonna I'm gonna shine that. I definitely think there, there's a there's a possi- there's a very real possibility that if Mercer wins this week, there's I mean, every single team, both teams in the conference championship game will have a conference loss. Um, interesting. And hopefully it doesn't completely destroy our playoff chances. Um, but I think I'm going to shine that for sure. I'm definitely going to shine that one. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll have to shine it too. Uh, right now, like, I got to believe I'll beat Sanford because that eliminates Sanford from being in the season. And I also go against the Tune Cook. I got. I, I'm gonna say now. What? I hope I stop them from being on the feeding conference. I don't know if I can. I hope. Um. So if I get my way, this will definitely be a. Sh- if I don't get my way, it could be a shade. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. In that same vein, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a question from the audience. Is Shine or Shade one of the currently undefeated teams in conference finishes with more than two conference losses? Um, so, because Bethune Cookman, uh, Alabama A and M, or Samford finishes with two conference losses. I think that I mean the best chance of that happening is in the North, obviously. Um, considering that one of us is gonna get one anyways, I. I mean, I might maybe have a little bit of uh, of bias since I'm one of the teams involved, but I'm gonna I'm gonna shade that. I, I don't I think that uh, I think that there's gonna be one conference loss at most for those three teams. Um, they've they've all have looked pretty good. Now at a conference that might change, um, but it's a pretty grueling schedule. I guess. Well, I mean, I guess we're not even really considering the fact that um, Sanford and I both have to play Matt as Jacksonville State, so. You know, and actually, I'm going to flip my answer. I'm going to shine that because the loser of our game has to go and play Jacksonville State. So I'm actually going to I'm going to um, I'm going to shine that. And the loser, whoever loses our game, probably has a good chance of losing to Matt as well. Yeah, I think I'll have to shine it. Um, three pe- First, well, out, after this week, four conference games. So even if all three of you stay. On the field. Uh, four games, so I think it's possible one of you will go two and two, especially like Sam for uh, I've seen Sam for schedule, he has a hard schedule. Uh, uh, but and I think Bethune Cookman has a pretty a decently hard schedule, so I'm not predicting which one will. I think so. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to ask this last one. Um, Shiner Shade, winner of the Bama Belt, does not win the A-Sun North. I think I'll just shade it. Jacksonville State still hasn't played a Bama, a Bama Belt game. And I, I think he's going to... Pretty likely he's gonna beat two out of three other people 
Yeah. And I think he'll still. I mean, he'll. Uh, I think he'll win the North, and I think he'll at least two Bama Belt victories that will to winning the. Uh, but with all four, uh, all four teams are in the North. Yeah, so it will be. It'll probably be. You and Stanford are both on top of the division right now, just because you're undefeated in conference. Yeah. Um. So. I think yeah, and you two still play each other. So while I think it'll be Jacksonville State coming out on top, if you got if one of you wins the Bama belt, that probably. Yeah, I. It, it all comes down to kind of what Matt. What happens with Matt um, and Jacksonville State? I think if whoever whoever loses Alabama and and Sanford, um, and if that person happens to beat Matt, and then there's a giant clusterfuck, then would help us all. Um, <laughs> conference, but um, God, it, it's hard for me to pick against that. I I, I think when sh- I'm gonna shine that. Who, I don't. I think the winner of the Bama Belt wins the North. It's just all three of you go two and one in the Bama. <laughs> you all beat Alabama State and then take turns beating each other or something like that. That yeah. Oh dear lord. <laughs> so that'd be fun. Um all right, well that is all the ones that I have. Um are there any other shiners or shaders in the audience? China Shade Sanford goes for. I I, I kind of just want to shine for the meme. Just to be mean. Just to, just to continue with the hate. Yeah, but that also might give him motivation. I think I'll save my answer till after. Argument. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I think Sanford has an announcement. Yeah. Is he able to talk on here, or is he just going not to? Uh, no, you can go ahead and talk. I think he should be. He should still have rights from last week. Yep. Hello. Hey, what, what up, Big Poppy? All right, so I'm going to announce uh, a second A-Sun show uh, with my beautiful, wonderful co-host, the literal king Pello himself. Ooh, uh, and it will be called... oh, nice. Yep, it will, it'll be called the Shade Room on Wednesdays. There is not an A Sun show, and basically, it's going to be more about the uh, news stories and the shit talking rather than the hard hitting analysis. Uh, it'll be a little bit shorter, but it will be good. Then this show, <laughs> yeah. Uh... A little bit shorter than this show. Um, I like it. I like it. I will be an avid. I'm gonna stream it. I'm gonna stream it and put it on my SoundCloud and uh, I'm gonna put it on Twitch. All the use of a reality TV concept. Exactly right. <laughs> I'm gonna hop for three months together with no access to internet. Wait, we need access to internet. <laughs> No, they, you you play old chess and then abacus. Huh, okay. All right. Uh, well, Sanford, thank you for that announcement. I look forward to the show. Did you want to uh, do your China Jade line on you? Uh, sorry, I keep connecting and disconnecting for some reason. But uh, sure. Uh, shine or shade. Uh, the A Sun is. The at the forefront of fake college football media. Is there anybody else? <laughs> yeah. Naki, Naki and Boomer are independent mercenaries, and uh, I think we got we got them beat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna shine that all day, baby. We're the most organized conference in making up news. <laughs>
We're the Kanye oh. West of all social media platforms. <laughs> my goodness. Uh. Excellent. All right. Well, um, that's all the time we had. Thank you guys for the show. We got another show coming up uh, next week, question mark, um, hosted by Sanford and Pelt. Um, that'll be on the uh, on the off weeks from this show. Thank you for so tuning in to the... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we have the Wednesdays that are game day. Like, the, ga- the day games start, they have the Wednesdays that games don't start. Basically. All right. Uh, so. Cool. Easy way to remember. Right. Well, I think this wraps up the show, right? All right. Sounds good. Uh, See you guys. In... Yeah. See you guys.